greetings of the day. In this video, we are going to discuss about total anomalous pulmonary venous return and also tricuspid atresia. So, total anomalous pulmonary venous return represents 1% of the congenital heart disease and pulmonary veins normally uh, they will empty into the left atrium. But in this total anomalous pulmonary venous return, there is anomaly, right? So, the anomaly is the pulmonary venous return will be into the right atrium rather than the left ventricle. Atrium. So, the total anomalous pulmonary venous return is usually separate into four groups depending on where the pulmonary veins empty. In the supracardiac type, like 50% of all the TAP we see, the common pulmonary vein is attached to the superior vena cava. And in cardiac type, the common that is 20%, the, the, the common pulmonary vein drains into the coronary sinus. In the infracardiac or subdiaphragmatic, that is also constituted around 20%, the common pulmonary veins empties in the portal vein. And also, it might be into the ductus venosus, hepatic veins, or inferior vena cava. Mixed lesions compose so 10%. The survival depends on the mixing of the blood. So, an atypical defect or a patent for amino oval must be present in these patients. So, without which the patient might not survive at all. When pulmonary venous return arrives in the right atrium, there is mixing of the pulmonary and systemic circulations. In the right atrium, blood crosses the AST into the left atrium or crosses the tricuspid valve into the right atrium. Systemic arterial blood becomes desaturated because of the pulmonary and venous systemic cardiac flow. Pulmonary blood flow determines the degree of desaturation of the systemic arterial blood. So, the blood flow to the pulmonary it determines the degree of the desaturation. If there is no obstruction to the pulmonary venous return, the systemic blood is uh, minimally desaturated. So, if there is obstruction to the pulmonary, it is des minimally desaturated. Obstruction to the pulmonary venous return results in severe sinuses. And because of the extra volume returning to the right side of the heart, right ventricle and right atrium enlargement can develop. Although TAPVC uh, more commonly see present with signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure. Children with pulmonary venous obstruction often have symptom free, symptoms of frequent uh, have a history of uh, frequent pneumonia and growth retardation because of uh, obstruction leading to uh, if, uh, pulmonary edema, fluid accumulation in the lungs. Uh, and uh, on physical examination of these patients, they can we can find the uh, right ventricular heave and fixed split ST. And also grade 2 by 6 to grade 3 by systolic ejection, a murmur heard at the left upper sternal border and a mid-diastolic rumble at the lower left sternal border also heard. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return with the pulmonary venous obstruction leads to respiratory distress and sinuses with a loud and single S2 and a gallop. But on most occasions, no murmur at all. Okay. And the second, the Next thing is the tricuspiratory shed accounts for uh, represents around 1 to 2 percent of the congenital heart disease. There is no tricuspid valve, and the development of the right ventricle and pulmonary artery interrupted. Okay, so there is no tricuspid valve, and the uh, right ventricle and pulmonary artery is interrupted. So, pulmonary blood flow is decreased in these patients with a no flow existing between right atrium and right ventricle. Atrium atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, or a PDA is necessary for the survival because the right atrium requires right to left shunt in order to empty. Okay, so the great, great arteries are transposed with a ventricular septal defect and pulmonary stenosis in percent of patients. Artery anatomy is normal and small ventricular septal effect and pulmonary stenosis is seen in half of the cases. With all of the systemic venous students shunted from the right uh, atrium to the right atrial and dilatation will be seen and also because it must come to the left atrium, there will be hypertrophy also occurs. So, uh, increased volume from the systemic and pulmonary circulation causes enlargement of the left atrium, the receiving chamber, that is left atrium and left ventricle, and the extent of sinuses usually depends on the pulmonary blood flow, and they are inversely related. Usually, patients have a marked sinusus, tachypnea, and poor fading. Okay, uh, single S2 is evident, as well as grade 2 by 6 to or grade 3 by 6 regards to systolic murmur heard best at the lower external border. Now, uh, the continuous murmur of a PDA may also exist. Hepatomegaly is present if there is um, congestive heart failure. So in these patients. 
So the third thing that we'll discuss in this video is strongest arteriosis is a small topic. Okay. So uh, the truncus arteriosus, it is uh, this is you can see the truncus arteriosus. There is common arterial trunk. In truncus arteriosus, all of the pulmonary system and coronary circulation originate from a single aortic trunk, arterial trunk. The defect comprises less than one percent of all the congenital heart diseases. As it is associated with the truncus arteriosus, associated with truncus arteriosus are a large BSD, coronary artery irregularities, and the George syndrome. That is hypocalcemia, hypoparathyroidism, absent or hypoplastic thymus, and chromosomal abnormalities. Pulmonary blood flow is and by type of truncus, and uh, flow can be normal, increased, or decreased. Okay, so there is direct relationship between uh, the amount of pulmonary blood flow and system arterial oxygen saturation. So it can be associated with either D. George syndrome that is associated with hypocalcemia, hypoparathyroidism, absent or hypoplastic thymus, and chromosome abnormalities. And pulmonary blood flow that is determined by the type of truncus. The flow can be increased or decreased. Okay. Um, the, there is direct relationship between uh, the amount of pulmonary blood flow and the systemic oxygen saturation. Decreased pulmonary blood flow creates a marked cyanosis, whereas increased pulmonary blood flow produces minimal cyanosis. But it's associated with the congestion to heart failure from left ventricle volume overload. Congestion to heart failure and cyanosis typically develops within first few weeks. The loud regression murmur, regression murmur 2 by 6 to 4 by 6 systolic murmur and left sternal border may be accompanied by high pitched diastolic decrease in the number of diastolic rumble. A single S2 is prominent. Thank you very much for watching the video.